Chess Workshop, so we're playing as black. So in this game, blocking the pawn as usual, basically trying to maintain some management of that area, also preventing the pawn from advancing down the board. All pretty simple, straightforward stuff. They develop their knight. We bring our knight through, supporting the pawn, so that makes sense. Nice, steady position. So the bishop comes through, we did say we were going to like start looking to practice this type of maneuver but we really do like this move here because that move does allow the fried liver thing and we do know how to work against the fried liver. It's more of a scatty game, you know once there's the fried liver the pieces are all over the place and we can gain advantages in it but it's just very it's just very messy and I do like playing ugly games but the fr get playing against a fried liver it's almost like a waste of my time I don't really want to go through it because we seem to be gaining advantages against the fried liver which are simplified for us and I don't understand why the opponent has done that particular gameplay because they're not getting the advantage that somehow they think they're going to get by getting rid of two pieces for one it doesn't make any sense so we stay away from that and um, we're almost saving the opponent from actually thinking about doing it in a sense so we just basically come out with our bishop just kind of blocking the uh, knight from jumping to here but it's also making space for our bishop to be more active because that is our bad bishop really it's the black bishop it's the king side bishop in my eyes that's what it is because we're going to be locked down on our pawns so we want to be trying to potentially get rid of it or make it very active so they push the pawn down obviously again probably looking to do this and as we mentioned in the previous game make space for the queen to come out at, all along these diagonals somewhere as well so always mindful to all the, these types of things so we develop the knight and again like in the previous same workshop attacking the pawn it's got no protection on it at the moment but it's also making space for us if we want to to go and castle king safety so they push through the center so no hesitation just grabbing the pawn because obviously we want to disturb the center as best possible and we can the spaces around any center pawns that they may have and they do grab so now we love pushing the pawn here does make space for the white square bishop but it also does kind of block off the attempt for the pawn if the pawn does take then we do have something that can take back so they castle and we castle king safety so feeling fairly comfortable with the position wasn't too sure what this pawn maneuver was but i'm thinking that they're going for the slow fianchetto again we've mentioned about the fianchettos block the way type situation in my eyes you know not in the grand scheme of things for everybody else but this is the way that i term it fianchettos block the way i mean if it was going to come here it's just got this pawn blocking its own way anyway and then it's got to get pieces supported to up towards my king area for it to be effective so we bring our bishop through x-raying through to their queen which makes sense to me, nice and simple, straightforward. And then they push down onto the pawn. And this 
really allows us this position here i was looking at this position but we could we couldn't go because the knight was there so simple direct maneuver tack in the um, knight the bishop's got an next way through to the king so it's potentially going to end up doubling the pawns in front of the king if played correctly so we're attacking two pieces attacking the bishop and we're attacking the knight in our mantra knights hunt the bishops but it all depends on the circumstance so they brought the knight through so we captured the knight instead of the bishop reason being this pawn was going to be brought into the center strengthening their center when we can look to basically just disturb the king area so i plumped for disturbing the king area because there's going to be a loose pawn so we're going to get a benefit from that actual attack because the knight was defending the pawn so the queen is not going to take and he didn't really want to disturb his pawn structure so we, we, we actually gain plus one from that position so the move order is kind of key in looking at your answer process looking at my answer process move order is definitely key we don't get it right 100 percent of the time but looking at the picture on the on the board looking at the position which is the best move that you can make at that time are you attacking a key piece a key square um is the tempo right for you do you gain advantages we still have an advantage because we have the x-ray through to the queen which is also a benefit so now they're wanting to get rid of our bishop so we can gladly just take that off the board now the queen can come down and attack so now we're reversing and attacking the queen at the same time got two pieces protecting the knight so feeling fairly comfortable with that position queen goes to the other side of the board so at this moment thinking is it, what's it really doing there it's looking at championing this square it looks like but i think there's more fish potentially maybe coming here to attack the pawn is he looking to bring the bishop here to go for this it's all pretty obvious moves maybe they are going for the quick and dirty tactics i didn't know so we brought the knight up again attacking the higher piece with the lesser piece as we mentioned before smaller pieces attacking higher pieces can be quite crucial it gains you a little bit of tempo so that you can improve your position on the board my knight's not supported at the moment so i did have a little bit of a flap thinking how am i going to get it supported maybe coming here sitting here but then this pawn's going to jump on it so probably coming back into a little bit of a safe haven here so the queen comes down and attacks but i'm thinking i want to keep my knight safe gauge bars jumping up and down like crazy but i don't play the game for the gauge bar i play for the comfortableness of understanding what i'm actually doing in the game so we brought it back because we didn't want an unprotected piece of any kind so the queen is in a not too bad position really for us because potentially we do have a little touch here because again i'm still thinking are they looking at trying to get this type of situation going and it looks like they were going for a bit of a cheapy um so we push on to the queen so the queen moves out of the way so we're making the queen do things it doesn't really want to do which is a good thing that's the answer process they're asking a question and when we're actually providing a bit of an answer against the problems that they're trying to create so now we're looking as you can see it's all basic stuff x-ray through to the queen with the rook again that's putting pressure or asking the question to the opponent what are you going to do about this potential problem so they keep the queen there anyway but we quickly move the bishop because smaller piece is attacking a higher piece and we do have enough support from our pieces to be able to deal with even the knight as well to deal with any attacks from the queen so the queen moves out of the way so how many times has this queen been pressured you know that's the question that i'm asking as i'm going through the game it's like well what problems can i create for you and um, the problems that you're creating for me i'm providing answers and then my answers are turning into problems for you which is a good thing so we take the rook off the board and now we're looking to get a nice position we're trying to block off any attempts really of this bishop coming into here also making space for our own bishop potentially to come through and take their bishop off the board 
queen moves again, so where is it moving to? It's got a two on one on the, on the knight. So all simple straightforward stuff. The bishop can come and defend and also x-ray through to their bishop as we mentioned. So the answer process is working quite nicely for us. We're trying to improve the position all the time. Uh, the, is our position correct? Any checks on the king? Checks, captures, threat, support, blocking, then back to position again. So looking at do those things improve my position on the board. So the knight, smaller piece again, attacking a higher piece. Simple stuff, simple straightforward stuff. And also it's defending itself as well. You know, it's not jumping out there and it's not supported. It's supported by a pawn. So the queen has to move yet again. And because we do have the um, bishop in our sights, we may as well take that bishop off the board now. Because that's a bit of a stronghold in that position. And if the queen does eventually get to here or something like that, um, if our bishop had disappeared, then there's not much that we could do about that situation. So in my head, let's take that bishop off the board. So now we're manoeuvring our queen, moving the queen here so that we can make space for a simple exchange of the rooks. Nothing arty or fantastic about any of this. All simple, makes sense to me. And it looks like the latter half of this game and um, the gauge bar hasn't dropped below our section, which is signifying something, I suppose. But I'm happy with what we were doing, even if it was showing lower um, and I'm comfortable with what I'm doing. Then that shows progress for me because I'm willing to challenge the computer. So the queen moves and the queen's moved to the back. I'm not really sure what it was. Maybe it's looking to eye up here. So really and truly, we can just simply go for potentially a rook exchange. And they do actually capture, so we capture back. So at this point, I'm looking at the pawn structures. At this point, I'm eyeing up the pawns. I'm thinking, well, we have a bit of a pawn majority on this side and it's equal on this side. So what's going to happen here? So they bring their queen down looking to destroy our pawn structure. So we simply push up and they push down. They're trying to mess up our majority pawn structure. So in the meantime, I'm thinking if I can put a check on their king, the king has to move, obviously. And there's not much else that I can do in terms of any further checks per se. So I may as well go for a simple capture of the pawn to try and maintain the poor majority on this side so that's like the future thinking type thing that's your planning side of things you know the strategic planning how can you improve and maintain the advantage that you do have on the board and it really is about taking time to have a look at what is the advantage that you've got and if you can squeeze it a little bit more it might not happen straight away but if you have a long-term sort of strategical view, I have a poor majority on this side. How can I maintain it? If it wasn't possible for me to maintain it, then obviously, you know, I'm going to lose them all. And if I didn't see that I had the poor majority on this side and I started focus, say, on just attacking their King Gary or moving these pawns up, and then I would lose the momentum to be able to attack their pawn and put pressure on their queen. So the king does move, so then we take the pawn off the board and attack the queen. So the queen does exchange, so now we do have a pawn majority on this side against one pawn. They have a white square bishop, which doesn't have any traction at the moment because it's not necessarily getting to this pawn. So they push on to our knight, so I'm thinking at this point now we don't want to get our knight too far up the board because it'll get trapped because it is a white square bishop. So we move our knight out of the way and then the king comes down and there's not many spaces that the knight can move to because if it goes there, goes here, it gets taken but the only space that it does have is this square and it's, pro it's protected by my pawn. So I'm gonna have to move my pawn to make space for my knight to be able to come out and then get back into the game again. So again, forward planning, looking at where your pieces potentially are going to end up. Are they going to get trapped? So moving the pawn up, it's defending the knight, but also making space. 
So we don't need to rush too much to actually move the knight. We can defend the pawn. And then they do a small pawn move here, which I'm not too sure. I suppose it's just linking their pawns up. But it gives us time to move our knight out of the way. And obviously it baited their pawn down to actually attack the knight. Which gave us a bit of tempo to go and attack the bishop. So the bishop moves, so that now the knight's advancing. And this is a crucial square for it to be at because it can take the pawn or the bishop off the board. So the bishop moves, but again we can just jump to this crucial square, put pressure onto this pawn. Only piece that can defend the pawn really is this bishop coming here. And we can gladly take that because we do have three pawns against one pawn. So the bishop does move so we do capture and again it's understanding this type of rhythm in your in the end game understanding that this sort of fine details of well what can the pawns actually do right at the back earlier on we had the plan of we had the pawn majority but how do we play that against the opponent so we start pushing forward and at this point here this is a very crucial thing, so crucial um, to know that you do not want your king to be behind this pawn because it's gonna you're never catching it. You know, so you'd probably just have to bounce backwards and forwards and wait for my king to come up and support and then squish you. So we move our king and then they do take, so then we can go ramp it up. So the opponent realises that, well, they can't go and get the pawn now. So we bring the queen down. Yeah, so that was the end of the game. So the answer to chess, as mentioned before, it's really about simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically. And the key word is strategically, because it's not just about quick and dirty tactics type thing. You could see that this player um, was trying to use the quick and dirty tactics type thing with their bishop and their queen but it wasn't improving the whole of their team's position on the board so their queen was being chased around the board losing them tempo and not improving the position on the board for the player and it's those smallest smallest of details that make the difference between gaining advantages in your chess games and not so much the answer to chess